And uh, that concludes our news updates here on Morning Light. The agenda will have you covered between 9 and midday. Now, we're going to Cape Town now because, you know, the hydrogen economy has become such a buzz phrase. Now, as the custodian of the Hydrogen Society Roadmap, the DSI will continue the conversation on hydrogen valleys, focusing on funding. Now, this morning, the Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Dr. Bladen Zimande, will launch the series of workshops which will be held locally and internationally. The minister will also launch the South African Green Hydrogen TVET Ecosystem uh, Just Transition Strategic Framework Study, uh, which looks at the skills that are needed for this ecosystem. And to learn more about the, uh, what's expected and, of course, these workshops and everything else around green hydrogen and that economy, we cross now live to our reporter, Frances Hurd, and uh, she will be talking to Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, Dr. Bladen Zimande. Frances, Good morning to you and I must just say it's so interesting this conversation on green hydrogen and the various facets of it. So what do you have in store for us this mm. morning? So it's huge, and if you need to know about green hydrogen, we're going to bring you a great explanation. There are a lot of universities here, uh, a lot of scientists who can make this high science simple for us. And uh, Sakina, firstly, this is a, a side event or a pre-event leading up to the World Science Forum tonight. So that is the big event. It's a global event being held in Africa for the first time. Uh, the president, there was some speculation a few days ago that he might not be doing his uh, uh, usual sort of diary activities, but he will be opening that tonight. So in the run-up to this, we're talking about green hydrogen here at the Two Oceans Aquarium, which is beautiful and uh, full of fish. And uh, this is the inaugural Science Diplomacy for Economic Development Hydrogen Economy Workshop. Now, as you know, Sakina, South Africa wants to be a huge player in green hydrogen. And uh, the the simplicity of it is beautiful. If you look here, H2O in water, there is H2, the hydrogen and the oxygen. Uh, you split it apart and then hydrogen is this fuel. It's, it's used for mobility. It's used for fertilizers. And if we keep the process clean by renew, using renewable energy um, to do the split, it's, it's clean. It's clean from start to finish and it's a great green technology. South Africa even wants to be an exporter. Uh, but some issues with how does it get uh, stored? How do we have enough uh, green renewable energy to make it in the first place? So let me bring in the minister, Dr. Blade Nzimande, Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. Uh, great that you can be with us uh, this morning, Minister. And I think, uh, like Sakina said, this is a buzz phrase, green hydrogen. Just tell me how you think it can be a game changer in terms of green technology and for South Africa. Thank you very much much, Francis. I must say I'm impressed with your knowledge. I think you have a job in the Department of Science. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Firstly, I'm glad that you are here, you know, as the public broadcaster, because this is indeed a very big event, the World Science Forum. But uh, as, you pro as you said, you know, we are having this conference this morning on green hydrogen, especially the, what we are doing in South Africa you know, the potential that we have, as you explain, we will actually largely be generating uh, hydrogen fuel cells at the end of the day from a combination of uh, wind energy as well as solar energy. We have a lot of sun, we have a lot of wind. So the African continent has got a huge advantage. So in, in this conference that we'll be discussing, I must say also that in this project we are working with, firstly, a number of uh, international countries, including the Netherlands, the UK, Japan, and the European Union. Uh, we are collaborating on that. We are also working today at this conference with one of our CETAs, Sector Education and Training Authorities, the Chemical CETA, which is also participating, largely looking into the kinds of skills that we need, because with this kind of new energy, renewable, we also need to, for instance, now to be producing green artisans. So it's very important, the issue of skills, the CETA is also coming in. 
We are also bringing in, by the way, our technical vocational education and training colleges because that's where you get your mid-level skills, which are very important, whether we are talking about plumbers, about electricians, and other energy mid-level skills that we need. Our Tivet College sector is actually going to be very important. So as South Africa, we really have got huge potential to produce hydrogen, but not only for domestic use, but even to store it and be able to actually export it uh, to other countries. So those are the things that we are looking at in this, what we call, it's part of the World Science Forum, but it's one of its side events that is just specifically focusing on this question of hydrogen. And thank you, Minister. You've spoken about the potential, and I think you've looked at one of the hurdles, which is skills. So we need to develop the skills. Uh, a lot of universities are here today and in, involved in this uh, collaboration. But what about the other hurdles? Water. Somebody said to me, do we have enough water to, to um, use it to get the hydrogen? And we're talking about, you know, I think the case study requires cheap renewable energy. Uh, we're, we're struggling even to keep our lights on. So, so how do you power um, green hydrogen? Precisely because we are battling to, to, to have our lights on. Here is part of the future solution, you know, that largely as a country, like the rest of the world is doing, albeit carefully and cautiously, we have to move away from fossil fuel. We have to move away from coal, unfortunately, in the end. But the speed with which we do that, of course, will be determined by largely our own considerations. But this is actually part of the future, you know, to actually say that as a continent, as I have said, with so much wind, with so much of the sun, we actually can be able to do a lot. Of course, you are right. The issue of water is a challenge. That is why, as we do this, by the way, as the Department of Science and Innovation, we have also invested a lot into water research, working with the Water Research Commission and working with the, the Water Science Council in order to look at new technologies, you know, of how to be able to save water, of how we are able to actually use water efficiently. But most importantly, also what the Department of Science and Innovation is, is involved in promoting is what we call a secular economy. We throw away lots of things that actually should be recirculated. Water is one of those. You know, we, we waste water, you know, instead of recirculating it. That is one thing that we actually need to do. Also, we allow a lot of water, by the way, to just flow into the seas. We aren't even using to capture water in some of uh, our rivers such that we are able to use it and also recirculate it. So deepening research into water is definitely, as you say, part of, amongst other things, promoting and consolidating a hydrogen economy. Minister, thank you. We've basically run out of time, but the, the World Science Forum itself is big. It's big that it's being held in South Africa, in Africa for the first time. Have you been concerned that the significance could be lost with all the politics, uh, politics of, of recent days? You are right. In a way, you know, this World Science Forum came at the right time to say as South Africans, we have a huge vote of no confidence from the global community to host this event. It's the biggest science event in the world. It's the first time that is hosted in South Africa. It's the biggest event I've ever hosted as a minister, as a matter of fact. So this then helps to say, let's focus on this because this is our future. What we need to be prioritizing as a country is actually how do we develop our economy and part of that is to develop alternative sources of energy how do we ensure job creation in these alternative sources of energy and forget about palapala pala, frankly those people who are using that for their own narrow political ends the president must go let's just forget about that the president will be here by the way to open this which is the kinds of things that as a country we should be focusing on, on unemployment, on jobs, on energy, on dealing with the high cost of living and so on. So this came as in a way at such an appropriate time to say to South Africa, here is the way forward.
All right. Thank you, Minister. Uh, and we will be taking that live this evening, by the way, when the President opens the World Science Forum. That was Dr. Bladen Zimande, Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. And I think we have one minute. I'm going to bring in Samuel from HISA Infrastructure. Uh, and this is a beautiful model, Sakina, just showing how green uh, hydrogen works. Samuel, run us through it quickly and, and put your lights on. Let's, let's go. Good morning. Uh, in front of me here, we're demonstrating a green hydrogen roadmap. So as you can see here, I've got a beautiful artifacts and pictures to demonstrate how we generate uh, electricity from our renewable sources as wind and solar. So you will see the lights indicate the generation of the electricity. So the electricity that we generate, we're using it to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. So the, this is where our platinum come in use to use it as a catalyst to split that water molecule into two gases form. But the gas that we're interested in in this nature is hydrogen yes. because it stores energy okay. which re uh, replaces the battery. So the hydrogen that we, we generate, we're storing it in a gas form or you can store it in a liquid form. In a liquid form is the purposes of the safety and the transportability for the purpose of using it in the industries as well. So here we are also demonstrating... Okay, so we store it and then very quickly let's, let's go to how it's used. So the, to, to the usage, we are using it for the mobility. For the mobility is to, for the purpose of the decarbonization of the transport industries. And for the uh, energy balancing, we can also use it in the mining industry to power our mining locomotives through the fuel cell and the fuel cell uses the hydrogen in pure gas form mm -hmm. to generate electricity and runs, and runs the motor. And, and mobility, I mean, we even have jet fuel, I understand, synthetic jet fuel. And yes. you said that um, hydrogen cars are a thing. So thank you very much, uh, course, Samuel. Yes, yes. I, I want to drive one, I really do. All right, that is a wrap. Uh, thank you, uh, Sakina. Thank you, Morning Live. And of course, tonight uh, on The Full View, we'll bring you all the action from the World Science Forum. This is held globally only every two years. The first First time, uh, for the first time, it will be held in Africa, and uh, we'll bring you all the action live from the Two Oceans Aquarium.